let's look at how to configure a router on a stick setup. First of all, I'm going to need a router and I'm going to need a switch. So I'll do a layer to switch and I'm gonna need at least two host devices so that I can compare and make sure that communication works. So the first thing I do is I wire everything. So I will run a straight cable from the router of the Ethernet 00 to the switch 00 as well. And then I will run a line from this first PC, PC0, to something in the first half of the Ethernet port. So Fast Ethernet 01 will work. I'll do another one from this other PC to something in the second half. So I'll pick 13 right here, 013. And you can see where they are connected. All right. Now at this point, I can go ahead and start configuration. But I want to know what addresses I'm going to use. So I'll go ahead and click over here. And we'll say, well, what do we want? So I'll have some VLANs. And these will be all my networks, VLAN networks. So my VLAN 10 is going to be 192.168.10.0 slash 24. My VLAN 20 is going to be, as you might have guessed, 192.168.10. 20.0 slash 24 and VLAN 30 is going to be my management VLAN at 192.168.30.0 slash 24. We're not going to do any restrictions on who can connect to each one, any of these VLANs, but we're just going to set it up so you have a basic setting set up right there. And then I first go and I configure the switch. So the switch right here we're going to first get into our enabled privilege mode, and then we're going to go into global configuration mode with conf T for configure terminal. And then I want to set a host name. Well, this is just switch right now, and we could do a full host name, so we'll do that just because we want to. So host name, switch.example.com. Now we want to set a message of the day, banner message, banner M-O-T-D, have some delimiting character, then authorized users only, and some ending delimiting character. So now we have our authorized users only message of the day banner. We need then need to set up our passwords. So we do our enable password. So this one is the insecure password. So I'll do plain text as the password. And then I'll do an enable secret. And this one is going to be just Cisco, a super secret Cisco password that no one will guess. And if I were to look at the configuration right now, so show run, you can see that the secret password is encrypted with the md5 sum and the plain text is still plain text i can make the plain text more hidden with my service password encryption which will then have a symmetric encryption algorithm that is then used to hide the password so you can see this although anybody who can see this would be able to do an immediate lookup on the web and reverse that so it's not really secure but that's okay we have both of those set now we want to go ahead and configure our vlans so the first thing we do is we put half the vlans into or half of the uh, ports into VLAN 10 and the other half into VLAN 20. So I'll do int range FA0 slash 1 dash 12. So the first 12 of them. And they'll do switch port access VLAN 10. So the first half of them go into VLAN 10. You can see at this point it creates the VLAN 10. Next, we're going to do a switch port 
actually not so smart. We'll do a uh, int range range. If I can spell it correctly, f a is zero slash thirteen dash twenty four, and we'll do switch port access VLAN twenty. So it puts those into VLAN twenty, and it creates the VLAN twenty. Now we want to create our VLAN thirty and assign it an IP address so we can communicate with the switch. So in order to create the VLAN, let's go ahead and exit right here. I type in VLAN 30, and that actually creates the VLAN. Um, if you don't create the VLAN, it you might be able to assign IP addresses to the VLAN, but it isn't actually created, so just be aware of that. So now I'll do int VLAN 30 to go into the VLAN and configure it. It changes the state to up, and I can then assign an IP address. IP address in the 30 subnet, which was 192.168.3030. And we'll make this one dot 10 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. And uh, we already have it up, so we don't need to do a no shutdown, but you know, it's good to get in the habit of typing in no shut down or no shut every once in a while, every time you configure an interface, just to make sure. Usually you want to put a description, and so I could say uh, management VLAN. And there we go. So we have an IP address assigned to that VLAN, and we now have a description on it. We could also exit out of here. And we can do a um, trunking. We need to do the trunking port. So our trunking port is going to be gigabit ethernet zero slash one, the one that goes to the router. So I'll do int g zero slash one. In order to change it to trunking, we want to change the mode of the line. So we do switch port mode trunk. If we want to, we can even configure it to block certain things, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to allow everything through, just make it a basic trunking line. So this port, at this point, I think that we have our switch basically configured. So we'll go ahead and close this, and we'll go to the router next. We want to make sure the router is working correctly. And whenever you see, would you like to enter this initial configuration dialog, just type in no. We're going to enable that. We're going to go to the general configuration. And we're going to configure this device with the host name. Host name, router.example.com. So now it has a host name. We want to set a banner message. Banner, M-O-T-D some delimiting character authorized users only and end it with the same delimiting character then we want to do our enable password and we'll have our plain text password and we'll do our enable secret for our md5 encrypted hashed password cisco and then we want to have the service password encryption turned on so that it obfuscates the passwords and makes them harder to see. All right, next we need to go into our interface, so int g0 slash 1, and we need to activate the interface. So no shut to activate the interface. At this point, the interface is live. However, we can't really communicate with it or communicate with the switch very well because we need to configure IP addresses on the sub interfaces. So in order to do that, we will go ahead and enter the sub interfaces. So we'll do int, int g0 slash 1 dot 10. And in the sub interface, we're going to um, first turn on our encapsulation 
mode. So it's a dot one Q 10. So that says this is using the VLAN 10 on our dot 10 sub interface. Then we'll sign IP address, IP address. And we'll go ahead and sign the first IP address in the subnet or in the network to this uh, router. So 192.168.10.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. We like to put a no shut even though the interface is already active just because we want to get in the habit of doing that. And we probably want to put a description on the interface. And this one is going to be VLAN 10. Now we're going to go to the next subinterface. So we do int g0 slash 1.20. And we're going to go ahead and do the encapsulation. So dot 1q 20. And it's the IP address of 192.168.20.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0 with a description of VLAN 20 and we're going to do a no shut even though it is already active then we go into our next sub interface g0 slash 1.30 do encapsulation dot one q 30 and we will assign it the IP address of 192.168.30.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0 we're going to give it a description as well this will be our management VLAN and we're going to do a no shut even though the interface is already active. So at this point, we should be able to communicate with the switch. So I'll do an end <clears throat> and I will try pinging the switch. So 192.168.30.10 was the switch. And it should be able to send down that interface and get to the switch. So there we go. Now, the switch at this point can communicate with the router. However, there is going to be an issue if the switch wants to talk to the PCs because the switch does not have anything set up as far as its um, default gateway. So let's jump back over to the default gateway and configure it on the switch right here. We are still in the switch. Then we'll do IP default gateway and be 192.168.68.30.1 is our default gateway. Now for the switch, the default gateway is going to have to be an IP address it has because this switch is operating layer two you do use the default gateway command if it was a layer three switch and you were setting up default gateway type stuff you might actually set up a static route but we're we'll going to do that uh, if you want to save your configuration you can either type in copy running config startup config and then it'll prompt you through that or you can just type in um, write or just write with a wr and that will save the configuration we want to do that same thing on the router just in case so we can make sure that it is saved so type in write and there it's saved next we want to configure the pcs so they can communicate so they are going to be talking to the dot one address as their default gateway so I'll go to this pc1 and its configuration right here its default gateway is going to be 192.168.10.1 there's no dns server we'll go down to the fast ethernet and we'll configure 192.168.10.10 and the default subnet mask 
is the same as what we want, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and save that and have that taken care of. Next, we'll go to the PC over here, PC1, and we'll go to the configuration. And we will set the default gateway for this one to be 192.168.20.10, or .1. No DNS server, so 20.1, with its IP address being configured to 192.168.20.10. And we'll use the default subnet mask right there, and we're good. We can also jump over the desktop, run the command prompt, and then we can try to ping from here and see if everything is in pinging range. So first I try pinging myself, ping 192.168.20.1, not 1, 10. And it can ping myself. Next I try pinging my router. So the router is the dot one. Next I want to try pinging the switch. So the switch is 30.10. And then I want to try pinging the other computer 10.10. .10. And you can see it's taking a moment. Usually the first request times out because it's trying to set up the ARP tables and so you have a timeout. Um, if I were to ping it again, it should ping fine all four times. All right, at this point, we can see that everything is pinging everything else okay. Um, I could do a trace RT to 192.168.10.10 just to verify we are, in fact, going through the router. You can see this right here. And this is how you do the basic configuration for a router on a stick.